Hey everybody, so today I'm gonna to do a little review on my brand new 2020 GMC uh, Denali HD. This is a 2500 Denali crew cab short bed. Um, just picked it up, it's got 760 miles on it. It's got the Duramax L5P. It's got the Allison uh, 10 speed transmissions, four wheel drive, pretty much all the options, multi-pro tailgate, uh, navigation, sunroof, rear slider, gonna put rear entertainment at some point um, comes with the chrome steps factory it's got they got rid of the z71 package I guess they call it like z33 now or something apparently it comes standard because this does have hill descent control and the Rancho shocks as you can see the red and white shock there it's also covered in skid plates something different between this l5p and the previous gen is that the tank isn't hanging down right there behind the front wheel like it used to be, which is nice. Um, it's uh, somewhere up under the frame. It's a seven gallon tank and you fill it from the fuel door, which is much better than it used to be. It used to be under the hood, at least on my 2015 and 16 LMLs. This has the active air scoop. I believe it has active air shutters. So it'll actually modulate the shutters that are behind the grill for aerodynamics when it doesn't need the cooling and to help the engine warm up. That's what I believe I've been told. Front headlights, fog lights are all LED, um, you know, chrome tow, tow hooks, that's all included standard. Um, the, tow, the mirrors, the tow mirrors, they actually power extend now, like Ford has been doing for years. A GM finally did that with a switch. Um, there's like 15 cameras, I believe, on this truck. So you've got a front camera right here. There is a recall for the winter cover because the winter cover they sent out for these had no hole for that camera. So they're ordering me a new one. I'll never use it, but I'll have it. Um, what else? The front, the front of the mirrors actually not only have turn signals and marker lights, they actually have front LED lights that you can hit a button on the dash and it'll light up the front of the mirror. It'll give you kind of a spotlight in front. Also has the side markers and the kind of these round square fenders. Uh, what else? So coming from a 2016, there's just a bunch of differences. This thing is three inches longer in the bed. It's six foot nine, so six and a half. The cab is also longer and taller. It's just cavernous inside. So with my front seat and I'm six two, with it in its my driving position, I can get behind my front driver's seat, sit in the back, and I have plenty of leg room. Also has the built-in steps for getting in the front of your bed. And I'll show you where you fill your def. Again, Ford, I think, has been doing that. Dodge has been doing that for a while. Excuse me, Ram, Fiat Chrysler. Um, still got the rear LEDs that project from the mirrors. Um, again, they're power folding, power extending, auto dimming. They have defrost. You can see on the back of cab here where the third brake light is there's two cameras one for the bed and one for the rear view mirror so this has a camera rear view mirror but you can also use it as a regular rear mirror you just flip a switch being a 2500 my last two trucks were 35s this doesn't have the overload leaves but my understanding it has the same 36 gallon fuel tank the axle I believe is the same size except they are 342 now instead of 373, like they were from 2001 until 2019. So that's a big difference. Um, but you have the 10 speed with three overdrives to make up for that. Um, you get you get full torque in first gear and tow haul mode. And I believe torque converter lockup in first gear. So plenty of torque, 455, was it 445 horsepower, 910 foot pounds of torque. Same as it's been since 2017 on this L5P. <sighs> Um, let me see here. We got the multi pro tailgate. This has keyless entry, um, push to start. So you don't have to take your keys out, which means there's no keyhole in the back of the tailgate or in any of the doors, rear parking sensors. Let's see. You've got the seven pin and then these are for your cameras on your trailer. So you can have that invisible trailer feature they've talked about. Um, you've got the multi pro tailgate. So you just press the button. And my tonneau cover kind of stopped it there, but it would normally come down. 
Now be careful if you get one of these, don't drop the tailgate, the bottom tailgate with the top tailgate dropped if you have a hitch, because it will hit the hitch. And luckily somebody warned me about that before I tested it out. Here's the bottom. And you've got a handle in here. Now I did a video already, but I do have the undercover Armor Flex tonneau cover on here, which is very nice, I like it a lot. And inside the bed, you've got the four pin and the seven pin for your fifth wheel, which just has the gooseneck fifth wheel package, the rails underneath. You've got the LED lights inside. You've also got a 120 volt um, Edison plug. Um, there is an inverter switch inside, so you would just, I believe, hit the inverter switch to turn the power on to that 120. Um, what else? All LED tail lights, blinkers, backup lights. Um, everything is LED, I believe, except for the license plate lights, which doesn't make any sense, but hey, they probably saved a little bit of money. What else before I go inside? <clears throat> Just a much bigger cab, longer bed. It, you can feel it definitely when you're parking. This thing feels like, this is probably harder to park than my 2016, which had 35 and a quarter inch tires on it, which doesn't help the turning radius. Um, in the front headlights here, they actually put HD right into the side of the headlight. Again, all LED, fog lights, blinkers, everything. So not much to upgrade here. I guess I could throw a light bar behind the grill, uh, but I, I've decided with this one, just because of what they gave me on my trade-in and the fact that they gave me book, even though I had just a ton of money into the truck aftermarket, um, they didn't care at all about the aftermarket parts. Like they didn't give me a dollar more and I checked with five different dealers. So for this one, I've already done all the mods I'm gonna do, I believe. I've got the front window tent, which the dealer did for free. They claim they did a ceramic coating. They also did the door edge guard. They didn't charge me for any of that. I also did the floor mats, and then I did the tonneau covering. I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. So let's go to the inside here. Oh, again, let me show you. So the key fob is in my pocket, which I can show you. There's a key fob. You don't even get a hard key. And you have a tailgate release button on it. So if you hit it twice, you can drop the lower tailgate, but you can't drop the upper tailgate, which is nice because you can't accidentally drop it and screw up your tailgate on the hitch. And sorry the truck is filthy, it's just raining out here a lot right now in Phoenix, so every time I wash it, it rains. Um, oh, one more thing underneath is the spare tire. I don't know if they did it before, but I saw that, that tag hanging down. They have a safety cable that's hooked to the uh, frame so that if you're a little winch thing there fails that your uh, your you know your spare doesn't fall out on the highway so let's go inside and I'll show you so with the keyless entry the key fob is in my pocket I just lock the truck and I want to get in the back hit it again and then unlocks everything so we'll start in the front <clears throat> so Coming in the front here, this is the Denali. You get the Bose sound system. This is real wood on the doors. It used to be fake in the past, it's real now. Memory seats, you've got your mirror adjustments. That's your power extending mirror, which if I hit that, I'll show you how that works. All right, let's go back and hit it again. It's this one. Boom. So. That's kind of nice. Again, I think Ford has been doing that for a long time. GM just finally decided to, to do it as well. Four wheel drive, you've actually got auto just like the Yukons and Tahoes and Suburbans have had for a long time. So you can just leave that in auto, too high, four low, four high. Um, I leave it in too high, unless I'm out here, like somebody's homemade MX track. They got rid of the tow haul mode. There's no, well, they didn't get rid of the mode. They got rid of the button. It used to be here on the end of the shifter and it is now here it is actually a mode that you change with this wheel so you can go tow haul and then with the modes there's a couple modes i'll show you also this has heads up display you can change the screens that you're seeing the brightness where it is on the window 
and it has an electronic parking brake, so there's no more pedal down here. Um, let me see, these are the all weather floor mats. There's a 20% off code right now, or there was last week, on GMC accessories.gmc.com. I think it was holiday 20A, all caps, no spaces, if you wanna try that. <clears throat> so 20% off the floor mats. Let's look at the steering wheel. So pretty much the same as in the past, cruise control, heated steering, uh, uh, front collision assistance. You know, you can change your following distance. Over here, you've got your uh, voice controls and your menu buttons, the dash. You might've seen these in other videos. You know, a little bit of a weird design. I don't know what this does, but I keep trying and I don't, I don't see anything happening, so I'll have to figure that out. Coming up to the mirror, right now you can see your reflection, but if I was to turn the truck on, in the position that it's in, it would just be a video screen that's fed by the camera in the back. They got rid of the sunglass holder up here. They still have the home link, and you still got your uh, sliding rear window and um, was it sunroof controls, OnStar, all the OnStar stuff is gone from the mirrors you can see. Center stack, climate controls, so you've got, let me see, so you've got exhaust brake, lane guidance, parking sensors, tailgate, you can drop the tailgate from this button here, hazards, traction control, your Edison plug, uh, inverter uh, switch, and then your hill descent control on the far right. There used to be over here somewhere, there used to be your actual trailer brake controller. They moved it down here by your right hand. It is a push button truck, push to start. USB-C, USB, USB and USB-C, 12 volt. They made the, one of my favorite things is they made the wireless charging pad. They moved it from up here. They moved it down here and they made it much bigger so that somebody like myself with the iPhone Plus their phone would actually fit there and charge. So I use that all the time, whereas on my 16, I never used the charging pad because my phone was too wide to fit flat, and if it doesn't sit flat, it won't charge. So let's go into the back. Much bigger, much bigger than in the past, and one of my favorite features they got rid of in 2007, they finally brought back for 2020, is the rear center console vents. So people in the back actually have air conditioning now and you don't have to turn all the way up and face your vents backwards so that your rear passengers can have uh, air conditioning, which you definitely need out here in Phoenix. You've also got rear heated seats. Again, they've been doing that, I think, in Ford and Dodge for a while now. GM finally provided it. USB-C, USB, 12 volt outlet. Cavernous amounts of room back here. Really happy with the new cab design same kind of a flip up seat with your jack uh, controls that cord over there is actually for your block heater which reminds me they used to put a block heater extension cord under your hood and it was always hard to get to well now they give you this new cord that plugs in right here right in front of your driver's side tire and it's kind of like an xlr plug in fact it might even be an xlr plug and then you plug that into your outlet and you don't have to run a cord out of your hood. So that's pretty much the interior. I'll pop the hood here and we can kind of look under there. Before I go under there, let me show you the center. Look how big the center console is. Again, SD card, USB, USB-C, and aux jack. There's a safe that you can get in here. There's an LED light in here like in previous generations. Um, there's also some organizer trays. I might have to get one of those. And let's go ahead and look under the hood now. Again, active hood scoop on these Duramax trucks. They've been doing that since 17. There's also another intake through the fender um, that comes in right here. Kind of hard to see. Um, let me see if we can get this in. All right, they got rid of the springs. So for 19 years, they had springs opening the hood. Well, now they have gas shocks, which means when those go bad, you're gonna have to replace them. They're not that much money and they're easy to swap out, but probably lightens it up. Again, on this truck, I believe that everything on a hinge, the hood, the doors, tailgate, 
are all aluminum or at least some sort of alloy, but they're not steel. And you can see how they change the crumple zone in here with the fenders and it's just totally different than in the past. You never had this structure here. I mean, it was just kind of straight. So a little bit interesting. It looks a lot like under the Ram uh, hood. If you ever looked under one of those, a late model Ram. So here's your intake from your hood, which you can see there. And there is a, if you're in a snowy or rainy climate, there is a little drain right here. So when the water comes in from the scoop, it drains out before it channels the air over and down into your intake. However, I understand that most of the air still comes from the fender area, which is hard to see. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe they stopped that on 19. But you can see there's some sort of air intake right here. So they're getting air from all over the place. I know the cooling stack in this truck is just much bigger than it used to be. They upped the tow rating. This truck is rated. So this is a 2,500, whereas my last two trucks were 3,500 LMLs. And the tow rating on this is 18,500 from either the hitch, uh, from the, you know, the regular hitch or from the gooseneck fifth wheel um, package, which is over, that's like about 1,300 more than my last truck, which is a 3,500 and the payload the GVW is only 150 less, which on these new trucks, one of the cool things is actually there's no guessing anymore. They put a sticker on your little, on the inside of your door here, and it tells you exactly GVWR, GCWR, rear gross axle weight rating, your curb weight, and your max payload. So you, you don't have to guess anymore, you just know. And then it shows you your conventional trailer weight, 18.5, tongue weight, 18.50, gooseneck trailer, 18.5, and then the tongue weight and then the number and all that stuff so let's go back under the hood and i'll kind of point out some things so just a much bigger radiator than in the past um much bigger fan i think the fan is like over two inches bigger actually if you gail banks did a video on some of the differences between the 2020 l5p and the previous gens to get these tow ratings up because the dually which I think they're now producing finally that the strike is done, they're rated for 35,000 pounds. So that compared to the old models, the old models was like 20, 23, I think. So you're talking, you're talking like a 50% increase in towing with the same motor. So they changed some of the cooling or a lot of the coolant cooling. Here's your degas ball. It used to be on the passenger side on the LMLs. It's still got two batteries under the hood. The turbo has been moved way up on the L5P. This is just differences between my LML and the L5P. So the turbo now has been moved up. It's actually a smaller inducer. It's like 61 and a half. Um, and they put a catalytic converter. It's that big heat shield you can see directly off the back of the turbo to take, um, to take advantage of the heat. So that, uh, the turbo feeds out through that uh, cat and then goes down into the DPF SCR and where the urea is injected so definitely different from my LML huge tall intake thing I think Banks calls it the sad elephant um, I think that's part of the EGR right there I mean this thing just has so much stuff on it now I think I wouldn't want to work on it. it's definitely got a lot more stuff they used to for years and years and years they had the oil fill right here and then the l5ps they moved the oil fill way back over there uh, still 1540 ck or cj4 or ck4 uh, are both what are recommended um and what else again i'm planning on leaving this truck uh just the way it is enjoying my powertrain which i think for the LMLs, they dropped it down to 60,000 five year, and now it's back up to 100,000 five year. I could be wrong, but that's what I believe it is. I'll probably keep it for the extent of the warranty and then get something new because I'm sure they'll have a new body by the time that the warranty is up on this. Let's go ahead and shut the hood. Show you the glove box. So you've still got the dual glove box, which is nice. It's about the same size as it was before. Maybe a little smaller. But um, I don't have that much stuff anyway. Still got Denali in the headrest. That's uh, some fingerprints I gotta clean off there. 
Again, sorry that the truck is filthy. I just, every time I clean it, it freaking rains. Um, one that, you know, with the bows here and the door panel, they got rid of this trim. Used to be like uh, aluminum, like the, uh, the aluminum here. They got rid of that. I don't know why. And then also in the back seats, used to say bows on the speaker, and now it doesn't say anything on the speaker. So, you know, they're cutting costs in certain places, but the MSRP on this truck was about 78.5. I got about 8% 8 off on it, and they gave me more than, Liberty GMC gave me more than the other dealers did for my trade. So, all in all, happy. I don't have to worry about issues anymore. That's mainly why I got rid of the 2016, which I'll do another video on that. Uh, I will do a video on the underside of this truck. I do want to give you kind of a little little glimpse at it, but I will do a a uh, video on that. I just want to show you all the differences on the underside. There are quite a few. The truck's got the 20 inch wheels, standard. Um, what size? 275 65 R20. And these are Goodyear Wrangler Trail Runner ATs. They're quiet on the road. So far, just driving around the dirt out here, they seem to grip really well, and I'm really happy with them. They also don't run at 80 PSI. They run at, oh, they do run at 80 PSI, but I'll have to check the door tag sticker. My DIC is showing me that I'm at uh, like 65 in the rear, 55 in the front. So maybe that's what they set it at, I'm not sure. But uh, overall, a beautiful truck. This color here is called Dark Sky Metallic, which I wanted a metallic. I was either gonna get this or silver. Um, and the silver one, they wouldn't work a deal on. It was a different dealer that had it. I didn't wanna order and wait six weeks. So that is essentially most of the features that I can show you without getting into the infotainment, which has quite a few changes and I will get into that next. All right, we're here in the truck. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. You can hear how quiet it is. There is the heads up display, sorry about that. So you can see the heads up display. It doesn't show up very well on the camera, but it is pretty bright. You can adjust it on here. Sorry, I don't know why my music keeps playing. This truck has apps, so you can actually download apps on it, which I think you were supposed to be able to do on the older trucks, but it, not as advanced as this. So you can see you've got AM, FM, Sirius XM. My iPhone is connected via Bluetooth. I downloaded Spotify, Fox Sports. You can watch videos when you're in park. You can listen to the uh, videos on uh, while you're driving via audio. What else? So the DIC, so I bought the truck with 232 miles on it. I've put 530 miles on it. Very impressed so far. I just filled it up again. I got over 500 miles on the first tank and I was driving it. Um, pretty varied because it just, you know, it's breaking in still and I didn't put it on cruise control like I normally do when I'm going to work and coming from work. But so far I'm averaging on the other truck when I was going 80 on the highway in mixed city, I was getting 13 and a half. 75 and mixed city i was getting 14 and a half and this one going 80 in mixed city i've been getting 16 and a half to 17 and it's just barely you know it's not broken in yet so it's going to get better so i'm already saving money just on the fuel alone um let's go through this dic <clears throat> so this is your info page you've also got audio page you've got your nav all the same stuff as before your phone settings so on info page options, let's go back. So you got your home. If you go to info and you go to the bottom, info page options, edit, you can see your different options. I've got them all selected. Speed, trip one, trip two, fuel range, oil life, tire pressure, air filter life, brake pad life, that's a new one. Air filter life is also new. Fuel economy, average and best, timer, well, I don't have that selected. Following distance, driver assistance, fuel filter life. This has a lift pump on it because the new fuel injection pump, which is no longer made by, uh, I believe it was Bosch. Maybe it is Bosch now. 
whatever. It's like a, it's not a CP3 or 4 anymore. It's something else. It requires um, like 45 PSI from a lift pump on the low pressure side to make it 30,000 or whatever it does. Uh, th this is totally new. Um, so they put a lift pump on it. And I don't believe you have a fuel filter under the hood anymore. It's on the lift pump, which is located under the rear um, driver's side door, which is easy to get to. Engine hours, transmission fluid, temp, trailer brake, your gain, off-road mode, all your angles, DEF fluid. So I'll go back and show you. It'll show your uh, speed limit where you're driving, as well as on your dash and your speed, your direction, trip one, trip two, fuel range, well life percentage, there's my tire pressures, air filter life, 90%, brake pad, average best, following distance in seconds to collision, Just showing you in the lane, fuel filter life, engine hours, transmission fluid temp, your trailer brake, here's your off-road mode, two or four wheel drive, depth fluid amount, and uh, heads up display, you can change all that, brightness, again, here's your modes, so if I turn it to the left, that'll turn on my trailer, or tow haul mode, if I turn it to the right, I can go to off-road, or to normal, so I'm in normal, and then you just leave it alone. So, what else? It shows you your four wheel drive status up there. The 10 speed shifts super smooth. It definitely, you can't even feel the shifts. It downshifts quickly when you give it some power and it takes off. It's got a lot of power. It's, uh, it responds, there's no dead pedal. And uh, at 80 miles an hour, I'm at like 1700 RPM. So that's the reason for the third overdrive, the bigger tires, the lower or the higher gear ratio in the back, the 342. So here you've got your front of your mirror lights, um, your headlights, I don't know, I guess cruise control. I don't know why you would adjust it over here. Your fog light, cargo light, it also includes your mirrors, and then four wheel drive, auto, which I guess I have to hit. Let me see, four wheel drive, shifting. If I hit auto, see it goes, it's an auto now. All right, so let's go to the DIC, show you a little bit here. So you've got climate controls down here, same as before, heated seats, cooled seats. Um, I've already pointed some of those things out. Here's your 110, which you have to turn on. So that's off. I don't know if I think it's about 400 watts your 12 volts and then into your DIC. So you're gonna have, let's see, you, you've got your apps, trailering, trailering you, shows you all your trailers. I haven't hooked the trailer to this yet. Gives you a checklist, you can tell them what kind, your status and it'll tell you all kinds of stuff. You can actually get TPMS for your trailer and it'll actually monitor that. You can track the maintenance for the trailers, tow haul mode reminder, um, Let's go back here to cameras. These are interesting. So there's your overhead, kind of a 360 view, and that is my front. And if I hit that again, that's my rear. Let's see, let's go do a 360. There's my 360. There's uh, looking back and overhead. And if I hit that again, that's looking forward at my front tires. There's split back. And I think you can change that split front let's go if you had a trailer camera connected you would hit that and you've got your bed camera and then you've got your hitch camera and when you're driving it only gives you eight seconds to look at these but when you're parked you can look at them as long as you want on star climate control you can adjust your climate in the uh, infotainment system let's see uh, GMC will give you your manual and a few other things. Let me see what it shows. You can schedule service appointments. Um, you can view recalls. Let's see. Roadside assistance. I don't know 
know if you pay for that or not. Marketplace, you can actually go in here and hook up your bank account or credit card and you can order food. You can order GMC accessories like right from your infotainment. I think this is a part of OnStar. So if you're paying for OnStar right now, I'm on a trial. They give it to you. Um, let's see what else. OnStar services. These are my apps I've downloaded. So before you would have a weather app, well now you have to download the Weather Channel app. And uh, if you go into it, it'll find your location. And you can look at it now, hourly, daily, okay. And then radar, pretty sweet. So gives you, you can look up your locations, Fox Sports, Spotify. That's all I've got right now. And then you've got your phone nav. You have a Wi-Fi hotspot in here, but you have to pay for Sirius to get that. Um, it's the 4G speed uh, internet. You can connect, I think, five devices. You can also hook up 10 Bluetooth devices. Uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, those only work when you're plugged in to the thing, to the USB. And then if you swipe over to home, it'll show your nav and your, um, your uh, deal at the same time. So that's most of it. I think the only last thing we would do here is a driving review. And um, we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, we're in the same area that we were. I was showing you everything else here. I'm in off-road mode now with the four-wheel drive and auto. And uh, I've got the front camera going, which I think these cameras work under 25 miles an hour. So I can't see over my hood, but I've walked this already and I know where I'm going. But I can look right here at my front camera and I can just get over that hump and now I can see where I'm at. Shows me my angle, 11 degrees. I'm in all wheel drive. Go ahead and cut through here. Again, it's an auto, so I don't know how fast it'll shift, but it makes its own decisions. This has pretty good approach and departure angles. It's much more level with less rake than it used to be on the older models. Um, it just looks a lot better. I think the front end is definitely higher. All right, so we are still off-road here, still in off-road mode, four-wheel auto, kind of just haven't been here before. Let's go ahead and get the camera back. Uh, this is the front camera, rear camera. Yeah, front camera is what we want. And we're just going to kind of go back here through where we were driving. You can see the angle there. And again, I love the front camera because when you can't see over the hill or whatever your obstacle is, it shows it to you so we can just look at the screen because we're going less than probably I think it's about 25 miles an hour and I can just it's hard to do this with one hand but just go back through here up this little hill where we were at I said it was 11 degrees and these tires haven't slipped once, so I don't know if it was in four wheel or whatever. It just does everything on its own. It's an all auto is essentially four wheel drive. So there we are crawling. I can't see over the hood, but I can look at the screen and I'm at 11 degrees, 12 degrees, 13 degrees. And wow, that's just great. I just love the combination of the four wheel drive, these tires and uh, that's that front camera. Just amazing. So we're gonna go back over this hill and I can't see where I'm at, but I'm looking here. All right, so we're pretty much, wow, that's steep, 13, 14 degrees. So, pretty impressed so far, guys. For an 80, the dry weight on this truck was 8,300 pounds, you put me I'm um, 250 or 245, somewhere in that range, plus fuel, which is 36 times six, or so we're like two, we're like 450. We're like 8750 plus the tonneau cover. So for a close to 9,000 pound truck, I'm just real happy with how this thing responded to, um, to getting out of here. Again, let's crawl up this hill. Try and not get in an accident here. I got traffic coming from that direction. You can see in front of me. The way to the left. Oh, 
All right, there we are, guys, back on the road. Go ahead and switch this back to two high, and then put the mode back in normal mode. All right. So let's go back to the regular screen. All right, so driving impressions. I would just say that this thing is smooth, solid. Um, it just killer, man. It just so solid. It just feel the whole new frame, chassis, axles, everything is just brand new in this generation of truck, 2020. Um, different from 17 to 19 L5P. Like basically nothing is shared. Um, just floats on down the road. Sometimes it feels to me like a half ton. And the, the ride is not jarring and it, I haven't towed anything with it yet, but it just inspires confidence uh, that I'm going to be able to, you know, um, tow whatever I want and not be white knuckle driving it. Again, here's the heads up display, which is pretty handy. And I don't know, the steering is nice and firm on the highway. The faster you go, it makes it a little bit firm and when you get down the low parking lot speeds it's really uh, light however it doesn't change the fact that the truck is very uh, heavy and long and hard to steer in and out of parking spots so coming down let's go and see what what our following distance is on this black Jeep in front of me so it's showing that I'm in the lane and then I'm a safe distance from the guy in front. And I got too close to the yellow, so it flashed. Let's see, so I'm 1.8 seconds at this speed from hitting the guy in front of me if you were to just stop. So you can kind of use that to judge what, uh, what distance you need to be at. It runs extremely cool. It takes a long time to warm up. The transmission is running about the same as my other truck. I was told this gets about a thousand miles per gallon for the depth, so seven gallon tank, you should go 7,000 miles between Phillips. And I want to get around some of these people so I can show you a little bit of the pickup on it and how it shifts, which I might just, I might just pull over up here and do. Zero to 60, just to show you how it shifts. So traction control is on. I'm probably three-quarter throttle. And you can just see it shift, 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 shift. So it definitely got the power when you need it. I think with the traction control off in this cold weather, well, it's not too cold, 69, it would definitely break the tires loose. Not as fast as the twin turbo LML with injectors and pump and all that, but you know, for a stock truck that's got a five year, 100,000 mile warranty, you can't beat it. Anyway guys, definitely recommend upgrading no matter what your truck you have. I think these things are just amazing and you will get let used to the looks. I think it's beautiful now that I've had it and been able to see it in person. And uh, appreciate you guys watching.